Poor oral hygiene increases the risk of cardiovascular problems. Hey you guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about something that may seem really, really simple and mundane, but I promise you, unless you're a dentist or a dental student, you're probably doing this wrong. We're going to be talking all about brushing teeth. In today's video, we're going to be running through why we need to brush in the first place, what would happen if we didn't brush properly, how to actually brush with both a manual toothbrush and an electric, and then we're going to finish the video off with my five top tips and tricks. So throughout the day, our teeth get covered with a thin, sticky, soft layer of bacteria. This layer of bacteria is called plaque. The bacteria does two main things. The first thing the bacteria can do is feed on the proteins and the sugars in your diet and then produce acid. Now this acid then goes on to eating away your own tooth, causing tooth decay and cavities. The second thing that it can do is irritate your gums. And the bacterial invasion induces an inflammatory response by our own body to basically fight off the bacteria. That sounds like a good thing, right? Well, it, it is and it isn't. It's like a double-ended sword. Even though your body's trying to protect you from the bacteria, it's also causing damage to your own tissues, mainly the tissues that are holding your tooth in place, causing those tissues to die. If there's nothing holding the tooth in place anymore, then that tooth is going to become wobbly and it's just going to fall out. <laughs> of course, both of these things are not going to happen overnight, but what can happen a little bit quicker is that the plaque can harden into a yellowy substance called calculus or tartar. You're not going to really be able to get rid of that at home no matter how good your oral hygiene is. Your best bet is go to the dentist, get your teeth scaled and cleaned. Although what that calculus can do in the meantime is basically acts like a barrier. A barrier between the toothbrush and your tooth to prevent you from getting into the nooks and crannies of all your teeth, of all the spaces in between your teeth, meaning that the area of your tooth that's covered with the calculus isn't going to be able to get brushed properly. Several things can happen if you don't brush properly. The first two I've already mentioned, cavities and gum disease. It can also cause bad breath, staining of your teeth, making them look a bit more yellowy brown. And did you know that there is evidence to show that poor oral hygiene increases the risk of cardiovascular problems? I know. Most of the patients that I see brush like this. Now, this is really, really wrong. Not only is it an ineffective method of brushing the bacteria away, scrubbing away can also cause tooth wear, recession of the gums, and also sensitivity over time. Scientifically, the most effective method of toothbrushing is the modified bus technique. You want to aim your toothbrush head at a 45 degrees angle towards your gums. So for the top teeth, it would look like this, and the bottom teeth like this. You want to apply a little pressure, gently pushing the bristles against the teeth, and you want to brush in small circular motions for a few seconds, followed by a flick away from the gums. You want to make sure that you brush all surfaces of your teeth, the front, the back and the chewing surfaces. For the front, upper and lower teeth, brushing the backs is easier if you hold your toothbrush at a more vertical position. For electric toothbrushes, well, it really does all the work for you. All you have to do is guide it, ensuring you are angling towards your gums and ensuring that you hold the toothbrush head over each tooth surface for a few seconds. It's recommended to brush twice a day for two minutes. Don't rush when you brush. Using soft bristled toothbrushes is preferred over using hard bristles because it's equally as effective at removing the bacteria and the plaque, but it's not as damaging to your teeth and gums. Brushing using the techniques I've shown you is, is good, it's okay, but what can make it go from zero to 100 is by following the following five tips. Tip number one, spit. Don't rinse. Rinsing your mouth with water or mouthwash 
after you've brushed is like going to war with no armor, no weapons, and no shield. That was a bit of an exaggeration, but really, if you wash your mouth out with water or mouthwash right after you've brushed, you might as well have not brushed in the first place. Toothpaste contains a lot of protective ingredients that we ideally don't want to wash away. We want to keep that on our teeth. Spit out the excess and walk straight out. Tip number two, brush first thing in the morning, before breakfast, and then brush last thing in the evenings after you've had dinner. Tip number three, wait at least 30 minutes after you've eaten something to brush in the evenings, especially if you've had anything citrusy. Tip number four, always brush your tongue, either by using a special tongue scraper or just brushing your tongue back and forth with your toothbrush. Our tongues harbor so many germs and is often the main cause of bad breath. Finally, tip number five, change your toothbrush head every three months. Once the bristles start fraying, it's not going to be effective no matter what technique you're using. That is the end of the video, you guys. Well done for getting through it. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I really hope you've learned something new. If you have, don't hesitate. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.